Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well today. This time we are going to be talking a bit about Paperboy. We're going to talk about the arcade game, the, uh, the two Genesis games, and I might ramble on about some other stuff. So let's talk about the arcade game first. I had no idea that Paperboy was an arcade game back when I was little. I, I didn't live near an arcade, so I had no idea that this existed. Also, you know, it was one of those games where I just, I only knew about it on the NES. I didn't know about it on anything else. So finding out that it was an arcade game later on was, it was pretty cool. I do like how it has its own, like, custom, uh, custom joystick or custom controls. It's probably a better way of putting it. Where it's just, like, the bike handlebars and then you can, like, shoot off the papers in whichever direction you need to. I just think that's a really cool way of controlling it. So the first way that I played Paperboy was on the NES, but it was ported to everything. Once it became a successful arcade game, Atari just started porting it to anything that it could possibly think of. It was on the PC, it was on the 2600, it was on, you know, NES, Game Boy, uh, Super Nintendo, and then Tengen got a hold of it, it went on the Sega Genesis... Paperboy was everywhere. And to think, it's just kind of such a simple idea. You're a paperboy delivering newspapers to different houses. A concept which is probably very foreign to most people nowadays. I don't think paperboys were really around too much in like the 2010s. I could be wrong on that, but yeah, whatever. I, I just, I did not, I don't remember seeing them at that point. So let's start talking about the Sega Genesis version because I played Paperboy and Paperboy 2 on the Sega Genesis for this and I think both of them look really good. So this is the first game and yeah, it looks it looks so it looks so good. Uh especially coming from what the um uh, the NES looked like, which didn't look great, but it looked passable. This one is pretty well detailed, and it's a lot of fun. Now, I am terrible at Paperboy. Absolutely awful at it. As you can probably tell from just the terrible footage that I've got here. Uh, I never played this game the way that you were supposed to play it. Because I just didn't care. I always liked the idea of, of uh, breaking the windows, hitting the different people and whatnot. I thought that was way more fun than actually, you know, delivering the papers to where you were supposed to deliver them. Which is usually on the doorstep or try to get them into the mailbox. Because this is an arcade game, you get more points by going and hitting them in the mailbox. But, you know, what's the fun in that? I mean... You can do more vandalism and damage by just, you know, breaking people's windows and knocking over gravestones, which is kind of weird, or smacking their dog, or a whole bunch of other weird stuff that you can do. I didn't see death in this one, but I know death is in, I think he's in the arcade game, he's definitely in the, uh, in the NES version. So, despite the way I play it, there is an actual goal to this. You are trying to, one, like I said, uh, deliver the papers to people's houses, and two, convert the people who are not subscribers into subscribers. The way you do that is by throwing newspapers through their windows or just breaking their frickin' stuff. I don't know why that convinces them that they want to become paper, that they want to be subscribed to your paper, but hey, I, I guess it does in some weird way. It's a strange universe that this game exists in. You also have to start to wonder about the people that live here. Like, why are they... Why, why are they just so against you delivering papers? Like, why is everything trying to get af at you? Why are there people just fighting in the street and nobody's doing anything about it? Why is there a training course or an obstacle course at the end of this paper route? 
that was another weird thing. I never understood that. So you you go through, you do your job, and all of a sudden, boom, there's an obstacle course. I don't know. It's kind of strange to me, but, you know, whatever. You can also lose subscribers by not delivering their paper or by breaking their windows or shutters or anything else. That I can actually understand. I mean, if I'm subscribed to a paper and some asshole throws a newspaper through my window, yeah, I'm probably going to unsubscribe from the paper and most likely ask you guys to, you know, pay for the broken window. That would make a lot more sense, but, you know, whatever... It's not my, not my place to say it. It's this weird universe's way of doing things. So Paperboy 2 isn't that much different from Paperboy. There's a bit of a graphical change. Uh, it's a little bit improved on some stuff. Uh, you don't just go in a straight line anymore. You kind of have to you know, move around a little bit. The subscribers are on either side of the street or... And, you know, it's it's just a little bit different from the first one. I think the graphics are about the same. There's some other weird stuff going on in this, in this world. So it, it's very bizarre, to say the least. The neighborhood has also gotten much stranger. Just, just very strange. You know, people just rolling frickin' tires out in the middle of the street. These massive monster trucks... Strange women just sunbathing in their front lawn right next to a hose. Shopping carts are just rolling down on the street. You know, just It's a weird place. I don't really get what's happening in this world. It seems to get crazier and crazier the more that you go on with Paperboy. Just the weirder the... the sorry, the farther into the series you get, the weirder things get. Gosh, I don't know why, that was, you know, why I was struggling to get that one out. It eventually hit its peak with uh, Paperboy 64, where stuff just gets really strange. Like, that one is, that one's a lot better, I think. It doesn't look good, but at least it's kind of, like, uh, it's a bit more fun than the other games. I'll have to talk about Paperboy 64 at a different time. It's just not something that I can capture right now and really go over. But uh, we'll get there eventually. This was one of those NES games that, God, I, I remember I remember a few people had it, but I don't really remember playing it too much. I had a cousin who had the game, and I think one of my neighbors had it, and then a couple of my friends rented Paperboy a few times. It's honestly a, a lot of fun. It was one of those arcade ports that's, you know, if you just started playing games on the NES, you probably didn't know it was an arcade port. Or maybe it was just me. That that could have just been me at the time. Uh yeah, it it's one of it's still a fun game. I have a lot of, you know, interesting memories of playing it. I think my cousin got like just hyper into it. Like he really took it seriously if you were not, you know, playing the game the way he thought you should be playing it. It was very weird. I, I don't really understand why. Like, he would... He, he's a very nice guy, but just... He took video games a bit too seriously. And maybe it's because he didn't play them that often. Or maybe it was just me and I didn't take it seriously enough for him. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap everything up. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, and... You know, if you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.